Thank you. I think in England we might call this the graveyard shift, the last person to perform. So <laughs> we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Great. If you grow up in a small island, you keep bumping into the edges. And if you never leave that island, it's difficult to understand how big the world really is. So I was in my late 20s when, behind the wheel of a powerful van with a credit card and a passport in my pocket, we landed at Hamburg. And that was the first time I got a sense of how vast this planet is. In my imagination, it was unbroken road to Vladivostok, Chennai and Durban. We were going towards Hanover because we'd had our first hit show. It was in demand all around Europe and I had started to feel like a significant artist. And that meant a significant person. But that feeling did not last for very long. Every big city I went to, everyone was super busy, and each city seemed bigger than the last with busier and busier people. And all of those people seemed so busy doing the thing that they do that very few of them noticed that we'd arrived to do the thing that we do. So back at home, contemplating my newfound insignificance, I started to think, how can I understand better my place in this world? I thought it might help to understand how many people I share the planet with, so I looked it up, but that really didn't help at all. 6.2 billion. How do you make any sense of that number? Even if you write it out in full, it's ungraspable. And then I started to think, Maybe that's the problem. You can't grasp it. Maybe if I found 6.2 billion graspable things, put them in a pile, took one away, said, that's me, <laughs> and looked back at everyone else, maybe then I would understand my place in the world. So I spent some time with the kitchen scales, and I calculated that I would need 104 tonnes of rice to get 6.2 billion grains. That's four large lorryfuls. I was both surprised and upset because by this point, I really wanted to build this pile. <laughs> At that time, 2003, the population of the United Kingdom was 60 million, which conveniently was one tonne of rice, which was a manageable quantity. And whilst I'd been thinking about big rice piles, I'd also been thinking about a radio documentary that I'd heard. This documentary was about babies that lived in prison with their mothers. And that made me think, there are all these populations around the United Kingdom that I know very little about. I mean, how many of these babies are there? And how many women are in prison? And I know there are fewer women than men in prison, but how many men are in prison? And how does that lot compare to the rest of the country? And actually, while we're going on about this, how many prison officers are looking after the prisoners? How many police officers are running around trying to catch criminals? And how many judges are there waiting to send them to prison? <laughs> My show had turned from one big pile of rice into a whole lot of very carefully measured out piles of rice on neatly nabled sheets of paper. And so the performance installation of all the people in all the world was conceived. And I persuaded our local arts centre, Warwick Arts Centre, that they could host the first performance. And they said, don't put it in the gallery. No one will ever see it there. Put it in the foyer where everyone passes by. Hopefully people will see it, be drawn in, and engage with your work. And that was the best suggestion they ever made. Because in this first performance, we discovered that as well as being able to show shocking comparisons, and as well as being able to show changes over time, this simple device of placing human population statistics side by side also allowed us to tell dramatic and tragic stories. It allowed us to recreate important historic moments. It even allowed us to tell jokes. I knew people would be interested in the content of the show, but what I hadn't expected was how emotionally engaged people became. Now, I think this might be partly because of the proportions of these little humanoid rice grains. 
I know in Germany you call them the corn, the rice corn. People seem to see them as human beings. If they saw one on the floor, not on a sheet of paper, they would pick it up and they'd bring it to us looking worried. I found this person. I don't know where they belong. They're lost. Was, Thank you. Don't worry. They're in safe hands now. You've done your job. Thank you. The other thing that I was really pleased to find out was that the rice retained its granularity. So even when it was in a huge pile, you knew that this pile was made up of individuals. And each individual had an identity. Together, they formed a number. And this was one of the key things about the show, is that we don't show any numbers, because numbers get in the way. In substituting four people, the numbers erase the people. In the same way that the label beside an image in the art gallery competes with and distracts from the image, so the number with the rice would take power from it. We don't need the numbers. We've got the graspable objects. So I said I was able to tell jokes. I was frankly surprised people laughed at the jokes. <laughs> Everyone who's walked on the moon? Michael Jackson. The famous moonwalker? Okay. <laughs> they weren't belly laughs, they were more like those kind of laughs. <laughs> the thing I wasn't expecting was that people would admit to having to wipe away tears on occasions. Children who will lose their sight today and die within a year. Now, charities have long known that to show images of individuals in need generates emotion in a way that numbers can't. But this mute, disempowered parade of need or helplessness does have moral complexities. The rice is anonymous. It's blank. And the blankness invites you to invest in it imaginatively. And the blankness allows you a kind of screen to project your emotions onto it. The anonymity also allows us to be egalitarian which means that no matter what your social status, whatever your race, your gender, your age, your health, your fame or your fortune, everyone is represented by a single naked grain of rice. And in that way, we are like gods in brown coats. We plunge our hands into the rice sacks and randomly pick out a grain. Today, you will be Nelson Mandela. Today, you will be an oligarch. And you, you will live on a landfill site in Rio de Janeiro. We are all made of the same substance. We are all of equal worth. And today, under these lights, glowing golden, visitors will see this and know it to be true. Two years later, of all the people in all the world, was presented in Germany. We were back <laughs> in a large tram shed in Stuttgart <laughs> with a lot of rice. <laughs> Four lorry loads of rice. 104 tons of rice. We'd built a map of the world, a map that measured out the world in human circumstance and endeavour and folly and triumph and disaster and disgrace, all in granular form, on a scale of one to one, a map as big as the territory. This was a profound time for me. If you ever need to get a bit more humble, try taking one grain of rice in your hand and standing in the middle of 6.2 billion other grains of rice. So that was 2005. And since then, the show has toured on. It's gone to galleries and theatres. It's gone to tents and shopping centres. It's gone to cathedrals and community halls, a gymnasium and museums. 
And everywhere it goes, it's remade because it's a new time in a new place with new things happening on the news. We're working for and with new people with new histories. And everywhere I go, I'm hopeful. I'm made hopeful by these new people because all of them share the same interest in the world and their place in it and the place of other people in it. Everyone has the ability to leap into someone else's life imaginatively and empathize with them. And this gives me hope. It gives me hope that everywhere we go, people are shocked by the same comparisons. All the world's dollar millionaires, all the world's refugees. They're shocked by the quantity of us. Everyone who lives in China, everyone who lives in India, they're shocked by the economics. Everyone who will eat in McDonald's worldwide today, all the employees are Walmart. Everyone who will work for less than $2 a day. It gives me hope that so many people seeing a grain of rice in the floor will pick it up and try and find it a safe home. If people can care this much for a grain of rice that represents a person, how much could they possibly care for the person themselves? It's good to have knowledge, and it's powerful to uh, empathize. And this show makes both those things happen, but that's not enough. How can we, who want to bequeath a better world to those that follow, translate this knowledge and empathy into action and into change? Ultimately, it's so much easier to take responsibility for a grain of rice than a human being. You can pluck a grain of rice from the floor, safe in the knowledge that it won't cost you anything. But to pluck a human being from a leaky boat in the Mediterranean, that's to take on a much more open, expensive, and frankly complicated responsibility. It's easy to be shocked by the growth in travelers on aeroplanes over time. It's easy to be shocked by the number of people in Bangladesh who are displaced by flooding. It's easy to be shocked by other people who have lost their homes through extreme weather events, or people who are facing water rationing in Cape Town, or are fighting forest fires in America. It's easy to be shocked. It's easy to take a deep breath when you see counted out in grains of rice the thousand plus people in Chad who all together generate the same carbon footprint each year as you or me. It's easy to be shocked. But how do we turn this shock into action? It's difficult. It's difficult to find that ignition point. And it's difficult, especially if that action in any way threatens to make our luxurious lives even slightly less luxurious. And if we look around and we see other people who appear not to be making even this small sacrifice, well, then it's very easy to say, well, why should I? Or what's the point? Well, the point is, it's the right thing to do. The point is, someone's got to set an example. We've got to show that it is possible. We've got to be part of a trend. Am I optimistic? Yes, <laughs> because to be less than hopeful is to admit defeat. And because every day I see a human empathy acted out in our granular world. And to see you laugh and cry, this gives me hope. 